What's up guys, Robsco here, back with another unboxing and full review of the Z88 True RGB keyboard from Mechanical Eagle. You may recall the Z77 I reviewed a few months ago, this is its older brother, so you know that this also has swappable switches. Inside the box we have our guide, Chinese in the front, English on the back, your extra switches, switch remover, and a generic plastic keycap puller. And this is what the keyboard looks like. Pretty basic standard 104 key size layout with a numpad, and complementing the cleanliness is a nice, secret rare, somewhat holographic Mechanical Eagle logo. You might have also noticed that you don't see a cable. Well, here's the best part. This keyboard has a detachable micro USB cable. Thank you! You know every keyboard should implement such a thing if they can. It's a thick cable with a standard gold-plated USB 2.0 head. On the back of the keyboard, you have the slot to put your micro USB cable in, and it comes with cable routing, so you can have the cable come from the top, left, or right side of the keyboard to fit your setup. You also have nice large rubber blocks for each corner for good traction, and just like the Z77, the Z88 has the best soft rubber kickstand feet in the market. Like seriously, am I the only one excited about this? Anyways, moving back to the top, the build of the Z88 is a bit better than average. It's a thick plastic body, but it also has a brushed aluminum alloy plate on the top, which is also why you see that layer of metal showing, so you know that there's some rigidity in the build. The interface is clean with three simple blue LED indicators for caps, num, and scroll lock. Just like all other China keyboards, you also have your convenient Windows lock button. On the side view, you can see the exposed keycaps with its visible LED lights, along with the dummy stabilizer on the shift key, which are, in my opinion, way better than bar stabilizers. Moving on to the switches, like the Z77, it's using Gaute or Otemu switches, with MX Blue properties. The switch itself obviously isn't as good quality as German-made ones, but it's good for a cheap keyboard like this. A basic switch for a basic keyboard, Response rate is good, so no problems here. To replace the switch, use the metal clamp provided and squeeze the top and bottom of the switch. It should come out fairly easily with maybe a little wiggle needed. Inside you'll see the LED and the two holes that make contact with the switch. To put the switch back in or to replace them, make sure the switch is oriented the right way and slowly push down. Don't rush this step or you'll risk snapping the switch pins. Next is the typing test with the Otemu switches. Lastly, we move on to the RGB performance. In the Z77, I noticed that it was dimmer than expected and on the Z88, it's much better. Though for some reason, some effects like the single color wave makes the LEDs real bright while other effects are dimmer. You'll see. The rainbow wave is quite fluid, but not as fluid as the AK60 or anything more expensive. When slowing down the rainbow, you can actually freeze it at its lowest point. And function delete will change the direction of the wave. Next is static, and there's nothing much to change here, but you can change the LEDs to 7 different colors. Breathing is next, left and right changes the breathing speed and you have 7 color options as well. Spectrum cycling, all you can do is change the speed and that's it. Next is reactive, you can change the reactive speed as well as have 7 colors and then a random reactive profile. Single color wave is next, and this is probably the best way to get the brightest colors from the LEDs. You have 7 color options, and a multicolor RGB light profile. Next is Marquee effect. You have 7 color options as well, and a random color variation profile. The ripple effect is pretty basic, you've got speed options, and you have 7 color variations as well as a rainbow variation profile. Lastly is Surround Reactive. Just like the Ripple, you have 7 color variations and a rainbow variation, but unlike regular reactive, you can't control the speed of this reaction. Alright, so let's go over the custom profile. Some commented on the Z77 video about how the presets were actually custom profiles, and thanks to them I finally realized that. So anyways, custom is really easy. 
you have five quote unquote presets from ELF 1 to 5 already set. And to edit them, you just have to press function home, which has the LR labeled, and the indicator lights will start flashing, and you can choose your color by continuously pressing the key. To set it, just repress function home. This works the same with all five presets. And to reset everything, press function escape. The keyboard will wipe a few times and you're back to stock settings. Overall, considering its somewhat average build quality and cheap switches, the RGB, removable cable, and those kickstand feet might just be enough to push someone to make a purchase. As you can see, it's not a bad keyboard. For $55, you're getting the middle grounds between a low tier keyboard and a high tier keyboard. In my opinion, bang for your buck is pretty much on point for someone who's getting their first RGB mechanical keyboard. So what do you think? Is this worth $55 to you? Why or why not? Let me know. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and check the links down below to buy them. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.